Okay, we're in the front room, the first room in the Centre for Computing History, which is a museum in Cambridge, full of lots of old retro computers from around about 1960 to the present day. So, if you come with me, let's have a look around. So, in the front room, we have various different things going on here. We have Apple II over there, we have some of the original Macs, we have an IBM PC in the corner, but this is kind of just to sort of a little introduction to the main event, which is the main gallery down there. We try and get people in with some of the interesting arcade machines we have over here and so on before bringing them on to the main stuff. Street Fighter 2 here is always very popular. People go straight for that. It's great when we have uh, kids coming in. They come straight through the doors over there and they're just straight over to this corner of the room, to the games over there, before they even see that we've got the main gallery next door. They quite like looking at the old mobile phones too, particularly the massive briefcase style ones that we have over there. They're always good fun. <laughs> Um, we have an Oculus Rift in the next room along there, which you okay. can see someone enjoying at the moment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if we go through to the main gallery now, we'll show you the bulk of the collection. So people often, uh, they come to the front and they don't expect this to be behind the building. A great big warehouse essentially, just full of old computers. Most of them we have switched on and playable. We're trying to strike a balance at the moment between being a museum with interesting displays about the history and so on, and just having it all there to see a big arcade, essentially, people just go and play on and enjoy. Um, there are plans to do lots of new and interesting exhibitions in this space, but we always want to keep that sense of it being somewhere just to come and use the old machines, not just to look at them gathering dust and so on. We want them to be used and enjoyed. So yeah, over here we have a lineup of various uh, home computers stretching. Well, the latest one we have here is the RISC PC and we go back to the ZX81. Whenever we have school groups in here, it's always interesting you say to them, who's heard of this iconic computer? None of them have. It's, it's almost sad, but then you see the teachers in the background going, yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. <laughs> they always get it, and with the spectrum that we have over there as well, they're the ones that, uh, that know what we're talking about when it comes to these old computers, okay. but uh, it's good to introduce the kids to it as well. And there's a, there's a kind of link here as well, a, a geographical link, isn't it? Because we're near Cambridge and obviously... Mm -hmm. We do try and kind of tell a Cambridge story, yeah. This is probably the best place to be in the country if you're going to set up a museum of computers. There's a lot of computing heritage here. Yeah, for instance, we've done events. We've had Sinclair days and so on where we had Sir Clive Sinclair here um, last year to do a kind of retrospective of his company and his career and so on. Um, so yeah, it's a good place to be if you want to talk about computers. Yeah, um, can you just... And of course mentioning the RISC PC, which Absolutely, is, yeah. a, is an ARM machine. Yes it is, yep. Yeah. ARM are uh, one of our main supporters here actually at the centre, so yeah, we're very grateful for all their help. They've been really good to us over the last few years. Um, and they are, again, a very important part of the history of computing in this part of the country. Okay, right, let's go for a little wonder. I think we've got kind of home PCs and so on here, but the games consoles are probably the biggest drawer in this room, and we have those lined up just over here. So yeah, we try to not go too modern. We don't want just to have PS4s and Xbox Ones in here. We do have an Xbox One upstairs, um, but we're saving that for kind of special events and so on. But the latest we go just day to day in the gallery is the PlayStation 2 over here. About 10 years old is, yeah, the, the newest we want to go really, because otherwise, yeah, kids will come in and they'll just run for the things they know immediately rather than having a look at the historical stuff. So yeah, we've got all sorts. We have the PS2, we have the GameCube, Dreamcast, N64, PS1 and so on, and then some slightly less successful consoles like the 3DO. And we have, of course, Pong. You can't have a museum of computers or games without Pong of some form. Pac-Man over there as well, if people want to play that. And then around the corner we have even more. <laughs> including a nice bit of decoration. We have a wall of cassettes here, which is quite good fun. A lot of people enjoy looking at that and uh, trying to spot some of the games from their childhood. Yeah, I'm gonna look for Ghosts and Goblins in a minute. Is it there? I think this video might be quite long if we spent the next few minutes having a look to try and find it. So, it could be there. So over here as well, we have, yeah, we have Space Invaders going on on the Atari VCS, the original Mario, the original Prince of Persia, original Mario Kart. So this stuff over here proves very popular as well. Uh, when people come around the back and see this, they're they're always having a go on it. It's really good to see that something like Super Mario Kart is still as engaging um, as Mario Kart 8 is on the Wii U. There's probably not much difference if we had them lined up next to each other. I think people would be playing both. You know, it's really interesting when you get younger children in and at first you think, 
are they going to go for some of this stuff? They do, they really do. Good gameplay is always engaging and it's really amazing to see. We kind of step away from the gaming side of things when we get into this end of the museum and we're going on to some slightly older machines. Now we don't have as much switched on down here, partly because we are always testing, we're always trying to get things to work, there are repairs that need to be done and so on. But also because, as you can imagine, the electricity bill in a place like this is quite high. It goes up a bit. <laughs> but we have still have some interesting things over here. We have uh, SGI Indigo over here, which is quite an interesting machine, this one, because of just the graphics capabilities of a machine like this in 1994. For its time, um, in the early 90s, this is top-end kind of graphics production and so on. It's, this is really high-end stuff. These are basically the files, aren't they? Yeah, it's basically just the the hard drive it's just some somewhere in the depths of the system and you can yeah fly through files oh that one it can't load up so let's see if we can't go back a bit yeah it's not liking it at the moment i'm afraid That's right. <laughs> but yeah you can essentially you if you'll click on one file it will generate another little landscape of the files in there and the new folders and you can sort of click through and, and fly and through the system and that's what they use in jurassic park it is yeah yeah it wasn't just dreamt up by a scriptwriter. It was a genuine application. It's a unit system. I know this. It's all the files of the whole park. <laughs> and uh, just hasn't quite stood the test of time, really. We had a few of these machines lined up our, our last retro gaming night, which is an event we hold in here uh, where we get, get out loads more old machines from the archive. And then um, we had four of these, I think, which in their day would have been absolute top end uh, desktops running really serious applications worth thousands of pounds at the time and um, we had four of them set up playing Quake um, so some people might say that's a slight waste of computing power but uh, that's how things work around here <laughs> if we can uh, have fun with it and play games on them then we probably will <laughs> um, but yeah if we carry on down here we can have a look at some more some of the slightly older some of the slightly bigger bits of hardware we've got because although the story is focused on home computing here, we try and cover a bit of the early days of computing as well. So we have interesting mechanical calculators and so on over here. We have some military machines that we've got lined up. And then we have the very earliest complete machine that we have in the museum, which is this minivac from 1961. And then, yeah, we have uh, various old business machines and so on. And or mainframes like this computer here. It's one of my favorite things to do on school tours when we can actually turn the Elliott 903 on and show kids that computers used to run on paper, not CDs or anything like that. Paper was how you stored things. Is that your favorite part of the museum? What, what do you like best? It's, well, I'm, I'm a gamer at heart. That's my main interest in this place. Um, I'm very tempted to go and pick up a PS2 um, for 30 quid somewhere and have a big retro binge at one point. So yeah, that kind of era, PS2, PS1 is my main thing. But having done lots of tours and so on, the Elliot is my favorite bit of the museum actually. It's just so much fun to switch it on. We get it playing music and noughts and crosses actually on the screen, which is always good fun. And it's just such a fun thing to do on school tours, particularly and guided tours of the museum is to actually have one of these really old machines up and running and working just as it did. It's a really interesting thing to do. Is the big reveal. So this is the internals of our serial number three um, and it's quite drastically different. It has a simple circuit board inside, just one circuit board with all the components on um, and it had this connector at the back which allowed you to increase it to a massive 16k of memory uh, with that RAM pack. 